The first thing I'm going to talk about is summoning clouds. One of the most important things for an Aracune player is knowing how to safely summon a cloud. The most basic way to get a cloud out, especially at the start of a round, is to super jump backwards, double jump, and then summon the cloud. Because Aracune's jumps are so high, most characters cannot stop him from doing this. What they will try to do, however, is punish him as he comes down. So as Aracune, you will want to be creative and use his down A, B, and C dive moves, as well as his forward A, B, and C horizontal spike moves to mix up how you recover from the cloud. Don't forget that after the dive move lands, you can hold left or right to teleport and further confuse the opponent. Now the important thing to remember is not to be too predictable with how you summon a cloud. The double jump method is very effective, but if you are too obvious with it, some characters such as Nu, Lychee, or Telkaka will punish you for it. So some other ways you can summon are while you are hiding behind your 4D bell bug, or after you hit someone with standing A into 4B, or whenever you've created enough space. Be creative and mix it up. Now that you've got your cloud out, your basic strategy should revolve around which specific cloud you just summoned and how the other character is going to get around this cloud. For example, if you've got the high cloud, the opponent will likely try to attack you from the middle or bottom of the screen. You can use the down D spit bug to control the ground, or try to get a 4D bell bug out to protect the space directly in front of you. If you've got the homing cloud, the opponent will most likely try to jump or air dash over it. You can defend against this by summoning a 4D bell bug or by waiting for their attack and anti-airing it with standing C. You could also meet them in the air with jump forward C. If you got the circular cloud that surrounds Aracune, you can use this defensively by walking backwards or backdashing when the opponent moves towards you. Or you can air backdash through the back of the screen, which will cause the cloud to fly directly across the center of the screen. Also, keep in mind that some characters such as Tager or Hakumen will try to destroy the cloud, so keep an eye out for this and punish them. Now that we've covered clouds and basic zoning, the next thing I'm going to talk about is attacking. Erakune has three main ways of approaching opponent, and all of these are from the air. The first is his forward A, B, or C move, which is his horizontal spike. This move covers horizontal ground very quickly and is high priority in the air. It leaves Erakune's air options open and leads to combos on hit. Next is his down A, B, or C dive move. What makes this move so good is that its angle of attack makes it very easy to cross up with. And after it lands, you can teleport left or right to make it hard to punish. Forward teleport after this move can often lead to a throw into super if you are tricky with it. Herakune's third approach is his air dash cancel. The air dash cancel basically changes the trajectory of his air dash from a horizontal forwards direction into a down forward diagonal direction. The air dash cancel is performed by doing a forward air dash, then by holding back and performing an attack or barrier block. The most common attack to use with this technique is the jumping B spiky attack. This attack is hard to anti-air and leads to Aracune's basic mix-up and ground pressure. Once the opponent blocks Aracune's air dash cancel jump B attack, Aracune can now begin ground pressure and mix-up. Aracune has strong mix-up when he is in this spot. I will list some basic options, but you will want to be creative and come up with your own. First, Aracune can simply jump back into the air and do another air dash cancel jump B attack. Doing this repeatedly and mixing in a jump D ground bug attack creates a very effective high-low game. Both of these options lead to combos on hit. Next, Aracune can go into his ground pressure. This includes crouching A, standing A, standing B, forward A, or forward C. Standing A and standing B lock the opponent down and prevent him from jumping. Crouching A also keeps them in place and hits low. Finally, forward A and forward C are the overhead moves that add the mix-up. All these moves lead into combos and good damage, so use different combinations and sequences of these moves and keep the other player guessing.
Finally, in the middle of all his air and ground mix-up, Arakune can simply throw the opponent. Whenever Arakune has close to half meter, he can throw into super for big damage and a free curse. This makes even blocking a dangerous option for the opponent. After all that mix-up, your opponent is probably cursed. What this means is that Arakune can now summon 4 new bugs by negative edging or releasing each of the 4 buttons. A button makes a bug fly towards you from behind and above the opponent. B button makes a bug fly towards the opponent from above and behind you. C button makes a bug come from the ground. And D button makes a bug fly down and up in front of you in a U shape. All of these bugs hit once except a debug that hits multiple times. Keep in mind that you can also hold forward or back when releasing a bug to change where the bug will go. Mastering control of these bugs is vital to every part of Arakune's game, especially his bigger combos, so make sure to practice this. And remember, the opponent will remain cursed until he hits you, he throw breaks you, or your curse meter runs out, so plan your strategies accordingly. Whether you choose to be offensive or defensive when the opponent is cursed is up to you. Both styles of play are viable. If you have the life lead, it's often smart to use the cursed bugs to lock down your opponent while you summon a 4D bell bug and another cloud. If you are behind or just feeling aggressive, you can also use the bugs to lock down your opponent or cover you while you move into attack. Which strategy is better really depends on the character you are facing and the specific player you are playing against. Just keep in mind that it is almost always in your best interest to try to recurse the opponent whenever possible. Finally, I'm going to cover a somewhat advanced strategy called the Arakune Corner Trap. While playing as Arakune, it is often in your best interest to try to push the other character into the corner and get them cursed. Once cursed and in the corner, what you want to do is repeatedly spit at the opponent with the down D move. However, you want to be holding forward and down while doing this attack. What this does is cause your multi-hitting D bug to come down right over your opponent and keeps him from jumping. Now the key to the corner lockdown is that the multi-hit debug is summoned after every two times that you spit. Knowing this, what you want to do is spit twice, then press forward and D to summon a bell bug. The reason you do this is that the multi-hit debug will appear and lock the opponent down while you begin to summon the bell bug. Once the bell bug is out, you go back to spitting. Spit twice or four times depending on how you want to set up your trap, and then summon another bell bug. When you get used to this pattern, tighten up your trap by summoning A, B, and C bugs before, after, or while summoning your bell bug to really lock your opponent down. This corner trap can be very hard to get out of for many of the characters and forces them to either get hit or get their guard broken. It can win entire rounds by itself. And remember, the way that a character gets out of the corner trap is rather limited, so you can actually predict this and punish it as well.